Hi, this is Patricia Vaughn Rodriguez with my interview with Danny Trejo. I first met Danny back in 1995 on the set of my brother's breakthrough film, Desperado. I also got to work with Danny on the set of Spy Kids, Machete, and Machete Kills. I hope you enjoy this very special interview celebrating the 10th anniversary of the film Machete, written and directed by my brother, Robert Rodriguez. Hello everybody, I'm Patricia Vaughn, and welcome to My Happy Hour TV, Living Legends in Austin, Texas. Today we are here to celebrate the legendary Danny Trejo on the 10th anniversary of the film Machete. Hey. <laughs> written and directed by Robert Rodriguez. Danny, thank you so much for joining us from Los Angeles. How are you? How's your family? You. And it's absolutely my pleasure and I love you. And uh, it's been a long time. I'm, I'm glad that, I'm glad that uh, we, get to, we are getting together, even if it's by Zoom. I know, Zumania, because Machete don't text. <laughs> Still. Well, I'm here at Ibel Studio on 6th Street in Austin, Texas. Oh, my God. I love 6th Street. The epicenter. Thank you for letting me celebrate you along with this milestone. Can you believe it's been 10 years? It's like yesterday. Still, still people are calling me Machete. <laughs> <laughs> More people, more people know me as Machete than they do Danny. <laughs> well, I know why, because you play a superhero in Machete. How did it feel for you to be portraying what is now an iconic character? You know, I didn't really understand. I mean, it was a movie, you know, it was a, we did Desperado, then he told me about Machete, then we did Spy Kids, and a lot of, uh, a lot of kids knew me from Spy Kids. And when I did Machete, it was amazing to see like like little kids come on Halloween, come to my house dressed as machete. You know, they had the painted much. And it was like, it was like, wow, these like, they're not Superman, they're not Batman, you know, they're they're like machete. And they were all really proud. So it, it made me uh I think I think Robert Rodriguez gave us a, a a Latino superhero, and that was kind of like really, really made it. And still, like I said, people are still watching. Do you have any favorite memories or stories from the set? Meeting you, are you kidding? I, you, I got serenaded. And it's funny, it's like, uh, Robert <laughs> Rodriguez was talking and he said, uh, yeah, you know, the, the, that was, I said, that was beautiful. Yeah, they serenaded me. And then Robert says, uh, Danny, Antonio was there. Oh, he was? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was my sisters. I have four sisters, and we were on the set of the film, and we were got to serenade you. That and so that's beautiful. where we first met. Actually, was on the set of Desperado. I wanna take you on a slow boat to China. That was awesome. <laughs> you know, we were so nervous. All my sisters, we sang it like a fast boat to China. <laughs> <laughs> it was good, really. Well, this segment is called Living Legends. And Danny, what makes you a legend to me is your extraordinary story. My brother Robert has once said that you went from ex-con to icon. That's but you tough. Know, they still say that. It's so much more than that because you're very honest about your past. In fact, I recently saw your outstanding documentary. It was, I'm still processing it. You know, uh, you're, it's called the rise of Danny Trejo, inmate number one. To all of our viewers who have not seen it yet, it's an absolute must-see. It's, it's available on all streaming channels, Amazon, iTunes, Google, watch it. It's just a remarkable, raw story of your life. So Danny, why was it important for you to make this film? Well, you know, I do a lot of uh, outreach as far as like for, uh, juvenile halls and, and youth authorities and jails and high schools. And it just makes it a lot easier. It's like a lot of times uh, they'll show like uh, my documentary and then, and then it's like, I'll go talk. And, and it makes it a lot simpler because the kids, they already feel they know me, you know, from the movies and stuff. And that's the one thing that 
I think the blessing that Diosito's given me is he's given me a platform that that immediately I have everybody's attention. You know, the minute I walk onto campus, and it's not so much just Danny Trejo, it's the, the guy from Spy Kids, the guy from Heat, the guy from Desperado, especially Machete, you know, those guys, you know, they want to hear what that guy has to say. So, so uh, teachers even even ask me, man, you've got the magic touch. I said, it's not me. It's, you know, the, the fact that I've been in their living rooms with them. Yeah. I wish more celebrities would like, would like do that. I think because a lot of, it's, it's so, it's such a blessing to be like in the Dallas airport and some kid come up to you and say, I, I, I heard you in Juno Hall and I really straightened out my life. It's like, wow. You know, it's like, it's like a gift from Diosito. Well, it's a remarkable story of redemption. And I know you mentioned working with at-risk kids. What is your advice to them and young people to help them make the right choices during this interview? Well, you know, it's, it's so funny. It's like, a, a, right now, especially the way things are, it's like everybody has their problems. Everybody has their problems. And it's so much easier just to let the kids stay on the computer. Don't bother me, you know? And, and uh, I think, I think the most important thing that we can give kids is time, just time, give them some time, you know? And I don't mean time out. I mean some time just, hey, let's go take a walk. Let's go walk the dog and just know that, let them know that you're there. And for me, I, I, I always say, I'd rather shoot for the moon and miss than aim for the gutter and make it, you know? And, and, and everybody, we have a thing of, you know, I want to be an astronaut. Well, you can't. You, yeah, you can. You know, you can do any, we can do anything we want to do. The sky's the limit as long as you stay away from drugs and alcohol. The sky's the limit. Wow. Well, I bet most people don't know what a great businessman you are. Can you tell them about <laughs> your ventures? I mean, gosh. <laughs> Mia, you know what? Everything good that has happened to me has happened as a direct result of helping someone else. I got, I literally got into the restaurant business helping a, dir a director, a director, his name is Craig Moss, had a, had a, a low budget, no budget movie. You know, he had a movie, but he wanted to get done. It was called Badass. And he wanted to get done. He needed a name. And, and uh, Gloria, my, listen to your agent, my agent, Gloria. I had a, there was a movie, you know, that they were, they were, they wanted me to look at. There was you know, worth a lot of money. And, and, and then there was this low budget movie and she kept saying, Migo, you know what, Danny, listen, this, this, has, this, this has a better message. But I, I don't care about a message. I you know, just, just got money. And so I ended up taking her advice. And Badass turned into a trilogy. We did three movies. So I made four times the amount of money as, as far as the money went. But I, on, the, on the movie, I met a producer named Ash Shaw who saw that I like good food. I won't eat processed food. I won't go to, you know, fast food joints. I'll eat always good food. I got my restaurants that know how I eat, you know, and, and, uh, and so he saw me and said, Danny, why don't you start a restaurant? And joking, I said, Trejos Tacos, because me and my mom always, always joked about opening a restaurant. But my dad, my dad was like the Mexican Archie Bunker, you know, because in the 50s, women didn't work. You know, and, and if my dad came with five brothers, and if your wife worked, cuando estaban juntos, when they were, everybody was together, they would say, Art, you want a beer? Oh, wait, wait, Bonnie, hey, can I have a beer? You know, because because she worked, so she wore the pants, you know, so so it was like no none of, none of the women in the family worked. They all were housewives. And uh, so every time I wanted to make my dad mad, I'd talk about a restaurant, you know, and he'd go, hey, we got to. We got to keep it merry right there. Go cook me whatever you want. So when I said, I, when, when Ash said, uh, uh, why don't you open a restaurant? Joking. I said, Trejos Tacos. You know, and then we did, we did Badass. We did Badass on Badass 2. And then we did Badass on the Bayou. He brought me a business plan on Badass on the Bayou. And again, being a brilliant businessman, I gave it to my agent, Gloria. I was here. Read that. You know, <laughs> listen to smart women, and so, <laughs> <laughs> so she said, "Hey, this, you know what? They're, they're not asking for money up front. Usually, usually when you're 
a little famous. Somebody will come. Yeah, but you know, all we need is fifty thousand. Or, and this was like a no brainer. So I, we did it. So right now I got seven restaurants, a donut shop. Uh, we even got a restaurant with a punk bottle. That guy punk. punk yeah, he's in the airport. A uh, punk. What's his name? Wolfgang Pup. Wolfgang. Yeah, he's got wow. a restaurant. Wow. We've got one right there too, you know, so. And you have Cerveza, record label. I'm reading your cookbook right now. It's wonderful. It's a love letter to Los Angeles and your mom. And if anyone wants an autographed copy, go to trejostacos.com with recipes and stories from LA. 75 recipes and amazing stories. It's, it's very engrossing. I love it. I can't wait to finish it. <laughs> awesome. You know, and also um, our mutual friend and creator of this show, Andrew Saldana, told me that you're feeding people and families in need with your tacos. Tell us about that. Feed the streets. Yeah. Woo! What we do is like, what we do, we get a couple, few restaurants. We each put in a hundred meals and we pass them to uh, uh, like hospitals and homeless. And then sometimes we just uh give food away at different food drives so you know people can eat but you know it's funny because they uh every time we pass out food like the women with children do you have pampers do you have any pampers so i went and bought 150 boxes of pampers i did not know pampers were that expensive <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah we had cloth diapers when i was little <laughs> but i believe it you know in the end uh and so then we passed, they were like so grateful. And then we passed out food at one hospital and the nurses were like crying. We had two nurses that were actually staying in their car, sleeping in their car, because they didn't want to go home with, with, uh, you, with that virus. You know, they were taking care of people with the virus. So I will rent you a motel. And, right. and uh, they're like, they were unbelievable. They're angels, you know, and, and uh, and then, but like I said, everything that's good that's happened to me has happened as a, a direct result of helping someone else. That's how I started a record label. Right. So. Woo! Orale! <laughs> I just came out with a new one, Texaco. Awesome! awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, after quarantine, we'll go eat your Trejos tacos and serenade you. <laughs> Absolutely. We had so much fun with this record label. I started it, and I started it with a little girl named Twixie who was going to be 17 and then uh, and then and then I had her and Tara knew and then she Twixie started using when she turned 18 started using drugs and so oh my god man I went and uh, I don't throw anybody away you know what I mean it's like we put her in detox and and then I this last time I told her hey me I look you're blowing your voice. You know, you think that crack is doing you good. You're you're blowing your voice. You don't even sound like Twixie no more. I'm gonna put you in rehab one more time, and then and and then after that, it's like you can't be on the you can't do music because your voice. She got 18 months clean, and so we just started getting ready to drop another album, and she's got two songs on it. She's singing a, a how is it? A, I forget. It's you know, a beautiful song, but she did. She sings. She, she, her voice is so powerful. Sometimes she's got an amp in her in her throat. You know. So. Well, thank you for all these ventures and uh, and and also giving the food away. When Andrew told me about that, your outreach with your food uh, here in San Antonio, my hometown, made headline news. So I'm raising funds for the San Antonio Food Bank. And we fed almost 40,000 people since my mom's birthday on May 1st. So when he told me that, I go, that's, you know, this is a time for people to come together. You inspire. I want to inspire. People can make a difference by giving to their local food bank. You know, you know people, it's, a, you, know, you know, like when I go to juvenile hall, it's like what I see is like, I see a whole lot of kids that they already feel like they've been thrown away. You know, for whatever they, they already feel. And some of them, some of them were there they're, they're because their parents were fighting and they took them away from, you know, but they end up in juvie, and 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 so it's like what I try to what I try to relate. Because look, it don't matter where you start; it matters where you end. You know, yeah. today, the first day of the rest of your life, you can do whatever you want with it. 
and, it, and you can just make them feel that they can do whatever whatever they want. It's like all of a sudden they start. You see them getting better in math and getting better in English. And oh, I mean, hey, Danny, my mom and dad send their love and their God prayers. Bless. God bless. Yeah, I pray for all of them. Everybody, son in. San Antonio and Austin. I love Austin, Texas. Well, my mom and dad have a question for you. Okay. They want to know what you do in your downtime, your happy okay. place. Well, you know, like I, I like working on my cars. I got some some old cars that I love. You know, in fact, that's one of them. The one that Buick, that Buick right there. Oh, how beautiful! It's a '65 Buick Riviera, and uh, I love that. And it's funny because because uh, when we were we had it full of Pampers one day, and we were passing out Pampers. And Mario, my, my assistant, says, you know, we used to be shot callers in prison. And now you realize if we went back to prison, they, we'd have a nickname like, hey, Huggies, come here. You know, like, <laughs> 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 love. <laughs> You've been in nearly 400 films, Danny. Um, do you have a favorite role? You know what? I got to say that I would have loved the movie Machete, even if I wasn't in it. It was just so unbelievably there was action nonstop, you know, and uh, and then I got to kiss Jessica Alba eight times. <laughs> <laughs> so no matter what, no matter what somebody says, you know, say, hey, I thought you were taller. I'm tall enough to kiss Jessica Alba. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there a role that you haven't played yet that you'd like to tackle? You know, there's a there's a movie that I I absolutely love. It's called Valdez is Coming. It's a it's about a, a an old uh, Mexican uh, uh, warrior, you know what I mean? He, he, and 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 he 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 tries to help this family, and and, and it's a. But who was it? Kirk Douglas? I don't know, but he played a Mexican. Whoever he was, played, and 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 the 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 accent was terrible, but the movie was great. You know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> so I might do that one. And what character have you played that was most like the real Danny? I don't know. I, I, I did a I did a movie called Sherry Baby with Maggie Gyllenhaal. And and it was about a guy that, that was helping, trying to help her, trying to keep her out of trade on. And it was it was kind of a that's what I do. But I, that's what we do. Every one of my friends, every one of my friends, the people that are close to me has like has Calcetin has socks and thermal underwear in the trunk of their car. We pass it out to the homeless. And, you know, that's what we do. You know, that's that's the way Diosito wants us to live. And as long as we do that, it's like, you know, we're we're okay. You know, we got I heard a story on the set of Machete. In fact, um, I'll tell you it was my brother Marcel, okay? And he said, the real Danny that I know is incredibly kind and generous always says thank you to the crew, gives a little gift to everyone after the show. He's very <laughs> kind and a philanthropist. So that's a greetings from my bro, Marcel. Thank you, thank you, Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, okay, one of my final questions. What would you like, in fact, I'm hoping my brother Robert texts me, he has a question coming through, so here's one. What would you like the last line of your autobiography to say? Uh, tell him. I would say, uh, I hope you all enjoy Machete number three. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and here's my brother. He came through. He came through. Yay. He said, he, here's his question to Danny. Danny, are you ready for Machete three? How did you know? <laughs> I'm in shape. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. Danny, are you ready for Machete three? That's from Robert. Wow. But so Danny, the world is ready for it. Well, Everywhere I go, people ask me, hey, are you, when, when are you doing Machete in space? <laughs> <laughs> Danny, we thank you so much for allowing us to honor you and celebrate you on the 10th anniversary of Machete. God bless you, man. What a blessing. What a blessing. I met Robert. What a blessing. I met your whole familia. I think one of the sweetest things that anybody's ever done for me was, was serenade me in that restaurant. And I didn't even know, I didn't even know Antonio Banderas was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, wow. Thank our mutual friend, Andrew Saldana, the creator of My Happy Hour TV, Living Legends. And to Ben <laughs> Schneider, head of production, Tanner Walter and Raymond of Ibel. 
God bless you, Danny, and everyone watching. Bendiciones. Besos.